ever feel like you're kind of, you know, missing some pieces of the puzzle when it comes to your health? Mm, yeah. Well, today we're going to try to put some of those pieces together. Okay. As we step into the world of surgical rounds. Right. And trust me. Okay. It's way more exciting than it sounds. Think of it as like detective work. Uh-huh. But instead of a magnifying glass, we're talking scalpels and, you know, years of medical training. And just like a good detective story, got to start with gathering those clues. Exactly. We're diving deep into Dr. Atef Ahmed's book, Surgical Rounds. Okay. And the first thing that really jumped out at me um, was just how much emphasis is placed on the patient's chart. Yeah, it's not just paperwork, right? It's their whole medical history. And it's, well, it, you'd be surprised how often, like, even the smallest details can make a huge difference in, you know, a surgical setting. I bet. Yeah. That's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah. So Dr. Ahmed gives this, like, really great example. Okay. A 60-year-old patient needs surgery for colon cancer. Seems, I don't know, pretty straightforward at first, right? Yeah, right. But here's where those hidden clues come in. Absolutely. This patient, they also had a history of hypertension, diabetes, and um, kidney disease. Oh, wow. Okay. They were on multiple medications. Okay. So suddenly, the case is way more complex. So it's like those, like, you know, house episodes. You've seen house. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where they're, like, desperately trying to connect those seemingly random symptoms. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Is this what's going on in their head? Precisely. Yeah. The surgical team, they have to use this information to anticipate potential complications before they even, you know, begin the surgery. Oh, wow. They're thinking about anesthesia risks, potential uh, drug interactions. Like, these are the things that can make or break a successful surgery. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so the chart review is like studying the evidence board, uh -huh. you know, really looking for those connections. Yeah. Okay, so then what about when the surgeon actually talks to the patient? Right, right. That's where the real, uh, what we call the art of the surgical history really comes in. The art of it, okay. It's not just about listening to the symptoms, right? It's about asking the right questions. And it's about asking them in a way that you're going to uncover the most valuable information. So even just like... The way you phrase a question can influence their answer. Absolutely. Yeah. And then that ultimately impacts how the surgeon understands the problem. 100%. Dr. Ahmed talks about this mnemonic device. It's called um, OPQRST, which stands for Onset, Palliative, Provocative, Quality, Radiation, Severity, and Timing. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so this is a framework for guiding those really, like, crucial questions. Exactly. Okay, break that down for us a little bit. Yeah. What kind of clues are we even talking about here? So let's take Q, for example. Yeah. Q for quality. You have stomach pain, right? Yeah. Is it a dull ache? Is it sharp? Stabbing? Is it burning? Oh, okay. Each of those descriptions points to different potential diagnoses. So you're not just hearing about pain, you're listening for like the nuances, the details, that could be the key to the whole thing. Exactly. Dr. Ahmed actually gives this fascinating example of um, a patient with stomach pain. Okay. And when they asked what makes it worse, the patient's like, well, it gets way worse when I'm lying down. Oh, interesting. And that little detail, you know, a lot of people might overlook that, but that could suggest something way more serious than just simple indigestion. Right, it changes the whole game. Exactly. And then you think about like R for radiation, does the pain travel? Oh, right. If so, where does it go? Oh, wow. That can be incredibly telling. So it's like a medical game of clue. Each <laughs> question, each answer, yeah. like you're getting closer to solving the mystery. And just like in clue, sometimes those seemingly insignificant details, those are the most important ones. Yeah, I feel that. Okay, so we've looked at the chart, we've gathered some info from the patient, What's next in our surgical detective work? Well, now it's time to go hands-on, mm. literally, with the physical exam. Okay. And again, it's not as simple as it sounds. Really? Yeah. Mm. There are techniques that are specific to surgical exams. Like what? Give us the inside scoop. Okay, so we've got all these clues from their history, the exam, but um, yes. what about all those like high-tech imaging tools you always hear about? That's when the detective work gets really, really exciting. Right. It's not just about having the fancy machines. Right. It's about knowing which tool yeah. will reveal the best clues for this case. Right. So just like a detective wouldn't use a fingerprint kit on, you know, a blood stain. Exactly. The surgeon has to choose the right imaging, yeah. right? It's exactly. Dr. Ahmed emphasizes each type of imaging. X-rays, CT scans, ultrasound, MRI. Right. All have strengths and weaknesses. Mm-hmm. Ordering the wrong test oh. or misinterpreting the results 
is as bad as ignoring a clue. Wow. Okay, so give us some examples of how these choices like play out in actual cases. So say you're looking at an x-ray and you see free air under the diaphragm. Okay. To you and me, doesn't mean much. Right. To a surgeon, that's a red flag. Really? Okay, time for a quick explanation. Yeah. Why is that such a big deal? Often means a perforated organ, mm. which is life-threatening. Oh. Needs surgery. Like, now... So it's not just about, like, taking a picture. Oh. It's knowing how to read the signs. Exactly. Now, let's say it's a musculoskeletal injury, like a torn ligament in the knee. X-ray might show a fracture. Yeah. But to see ligament damage, you need an MRI. Because MRIs are better at those soft tissues, right? The ligaments, tendons, all that. Exactly. It's like upgrading to a more powerful lens. I like it. Get a closer look at the evidence. So based on what they see, that's how the surgeon then decides surgery or something less intense. Exactly. It's crazy how much tech has changed how surgeons work. Right. But even with all that, you still need that human element. Absolutely. A surgeon needs to connect the dots, yeah. analyze the data, right. and use their judgment for the best call for that patient. It's a lot of responsibility. It is. And that's especially true with communication. Ah, yes. Communication. The thing everyone always forgets about in medicine, but especially in surgery. Right. Like, that's got to be life or death stuff. You're telling me. Dr. Ahmed really emphasizes surgery is a team effort. Okay. And talking to each other is critical. Makes sense. At every stage. So it's not just how good they are with a scalpel, but how well they talk to the whole surgical team. Exactly. It starts with those handoffs between shifts. Mm -hmm. Make sure everyone's on the same page mm -hmm. about the history, test results, the game plan. Right. And then there's talking to the patient. Huge. Imagine going into surgery not knowing what's about to go down. Oh, gosh. Surgeons have to explain it so the patient understands. Right. Calm their nerves. You know. so this is about trust, too. Why, Letting the, the patient feel in control. Exactly. Dr. Ahmed even mentions some surgeons use 3D models now. Whoa, really? To help patients see their own anatomy. That's wild. And the procedure itself. That's like way different than just reading it off a page. Right. Makes it way more real. It does. And then there's the toughest talk of all. Which is... Breaking bad news. Ah, uh, yeah. Nobody wants to have that conversation, but it's part of it, huh? It is. And as Dr. Ahmed points out, doing it with empathy and being clear. Right. That's crucial for the patient and their family. Yeah. It's about honesty, but support, too. Mm -hmm. Even when the news is rough. Yeah, it's just those conversations are tough. Mm. They really show the human side of all this. It's a side Dr. Ahmed really makes sure to include, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. In fact, he says learning and reflecting, mm -hmm. that's just as important for surgeons as their actual skills. So it's not just about, like, new techniques or the fancy robots and stuff? Nope. It's about, well, looking back at what you've done. Okay. The good and the, well, you know. And not so good. Yeah, why'd those not go so well? Right. What can we learn for next time? That's got to take guts, though. It does. To admit you made a mistake. Yeah, but that's, I think, what makes a great surgeon. How so? They always want to improve, you know, refine things. Always asking, how can I be better for my patients? So they're like constantly honing their detective skills. Yes. Looking for new clues. Exactly. That drive to keep learning. Yeah. To get the best possible outcome. That's something we can all use. I love that. Okay. So next time you're at the doctor, anything really, mm -hmm. think like a surgeon. What would they ask? It's true. What would they notice that maybe you missed? It makes you pay attention more. It really does. Well, everyone, that's our surgical deep dive for today. <laughs> Me too. We hope this gave you a new appreciation for what goes on in those operating rooms and all the work that goes in before anyone even gets wheeled in. Lots of work. And, of course, the skill and dedication of those surgeons. Amazing what they do. It is. Now, if you want more, you've got to check out Dr. Ahmed's book. So good. It's really fascinating stuff for anyone curious about, well, surgery. The whole world behind it. Right. It's not just what you see on TV. All right. Until next time, keep asking those great questions and diving deep into whatever sparks your curiosity. You never know what you'll find.